We humans have 46 chromosomes that determine everything about us, from our eye color and height to how long we can drink a milkshake without running to the nearest restroom. Our genes serve as a blueprint for our lives, and even a small change in their system can alter something that is important to us. These 46 chromosomes come in pairs. 23 of them are from your mother, and the other 23 are from your father. One special pair, called sex chromosomes, determines what gender you will be born as. Double XX means you are a woman, while X and Y means you are a man. But how would you react if I told you that once upon a time, the entire XY group, that is, all the men who were alive, were almost wiped out? That a long, long time ago, the entire male population had declined to just 5%. That the male population was so threatened with extinction that there was one man for every 17 women. Just one. This means that I, you and your friends, Dimitar, Ivan and Peter, Mark, Jeff and Steve, would not exist today, and by extension, no other human beings, if what happened back then had not been stopped. Even more frightening is that the impact of this strange event is still felt today. What happened between 5,000 and 7,000 years ago that men, and only men, were on the verge of disappearing from the face of the earth? This is the forgotten strange and chilling story of a time when humanity was on the brink of extinction, known as the Neolithic Y chromosome bottleneck. In 2015, a team of scientists stumbled upon something shocking in our DNA. It turns out that several thousand years ago, a population bottleneck occurred that nearly wiped out our entire species. Population bottlenecks may be rare, but they are something that can be expected for any living organism, even humans. In fact, our ancestors have been on the brink of extinction several times throughout our two million year history. Several times this was caused by global natural disasters and others by biological factors such as epidemics. However, what happened 7,000 or even 5,000 years ago was quite unique. Why? Because it only affected men. On the other hand, the female gene pool was booming. Geneticists examined blood and saliva samples from 456 men from five continents, from Africa to South America. They focused specifically on the Y chromosome, a gene that is passed on only from fathers to sons, and mitochondrial DNA, which we receive from our mothers. What they found was completely unexpected. While mitochondrial DNA remained stable, the diversity of the Y chromosome declined by a shocking 95%. This means that about nine out of 10 men have lost their ancestry for reasons we still don't fully understand. As a result, every man alive today is a descendant of the gene pool made up of the 5% of men who survived this crisis. Even more surprising is that this catastrophic event appears to have occurred on a global scale. Therefore, whatever it was, it cannot have been the result of a local war, regional disaster, or even an isolated epidemic. This happened before large-scale seafaring, before long-distance travel, and long after the disappearance of the great land bridges. So the big question is, what exactly happened? How did the same genetic pattern show up everywhere? Is it possible that all these men died in a large-scale, bloody war that we have never heard of? Was it systematic extermination, or a plague that only affected men, aliens, Atlanteans? Or was it something else? We'll tell you what it wasn't. A volcanic eruption, a meteorite, or a pandemic. It was something much more human, and much, much more brutal. According to the leading theory, the cause of this widespread disappearance was violent and quite bloody social upheaval. More specifically, male-dominated violence between patrilineal clans. All over the world, people were transitioning from a hunter-gatherer lifestyle to sedentary agricultural communities. This change, known as the Neolithic Revolution, led to a radical change in the way people lived, worked and related to each other. It was a turning point that propelled humanity into a new era of permanence, growth and social complexity. Villages were established, leaders were chosen, i.e. the strongest in the group, and innovations were made that made life more comfortable than ever before. However, with greater complexity and comfort came many problems. 
people began to compete for land, water and other resources necessary for survival. Those who owned and controlled more, land, crops, animals, food and even people, began to gain power and status. Suddenly, it was no longer just a matter of surviving in a harsh environment. It was now a matter of securing the power and status of the clan, even after the death of the leader. With the emergence of patriarchal societies, the strongest clan leaders wanted to ensure that their resources remained within the tribe. This meant eliminating competition wherever it arose. The process of elimination was quite brutal and barbaric. In fact, in addition to genetic discoveries, there is other evidence pointing to the mass murder of countless men, children, adults, and even the few who lived to old age all over the world. Neolithic cemeteries are known for their remains that clearly show violent deaths, some of which bear traces of torture. In fleury sur orne France, a cemetery was discovered in 2014, consisting almost entirely of men, with the exception of one woman. Most of them were not related except for a father and son buried together with the others. The female skeleton was a special case. Pierced by arrows, scientists believed that she had a special status and was recognized as a man in her clan. In Schlitz, Austria, a mass grave with 200 bodies was discovered. Many of these bones belonged to mature men and children. Horrifically, most of the remains showed signs of violent death. In schönick kilienstadt Germany, bones dating back at least 7,000 years showed severe fractures, blunt force trauma and signs of torture. Many of them turned out to be male, both adults and children. Similarly, a number of burial grounds have been discovered throughout Germany. Even worse, it is believed that the victims buried in these places were also cannibalized. In those days, ritual cannibalism was common. The skulls of the victims were even used as cups. The common thread among many of these mass graves was the brutal, systematic slaughter of entire clans and communities. And although both men and women were found in these graves, young women are often missing, suggesting that they were captured rather than killed. Combined with genetic discoveries, these findings support the grim theory of a long-forgotten, widespread war that destroyed entire populations, focusing on men from rival clans in order to secure dominance, land and control over reproduction. However, another theory from an article published in 2024 contradicts the idea of a bloody, widespread war between clans around the world. According to this theory, what happened may have been more peaceful. Instead of violence, the large clans may have simply split into smaller groups over time. Surprisingly, researchers suggest that there may not have been widespread and violent extermination of the male population at all. Instead, men from the lower strata of Neolithic society simply lost their right to reproduce, while the elite continued to enjoy this privilege. Ironically, the men-only grave in France gives credence to this theory. All of the men buried there were likely elite warriors who once held high status in their community. Ultimately, the division of clans combined with differences in the reproductive success of each group may explain why the male gene pool has shrunk to what it is today. But which of these theories is correct? Probably the correct answer is a combination of both. Given how brutal the Neolithic era was, violence between clans aimed at killing men and capturing women was the norm. After all, countless mass graves have been found in many places, indicating the mass slaughter of entire communities. The men in patrilineal clans either died or simply lost their place in the gene pool. On the other hand, clans more often accepted women from other communities. The male elites would not trust another man who had invaded their territory, even if they did not kill them. The men who remained in the respective clans would not be able to exercise as much control as the elite men who controlled a given clan. The combination of these factors may have contributed to the low genetic diversity among men, a fact that is still evident today. Are men disappearing? In recent years, there has been a lot of noise and concern about the state of the Y chromosome. According to studies, it shrinks and degenerates over time. This discovery certainly caused panic, with headlines even claiming that men would soon disappear. But how true is this? Does it have anything to do with an event that happened thousands of years ago? 
The answer is very complex. Yes, the Y chromosome is in danger. Yes, that event thousands of years ago contributed to some extent to this degeneration of the Y chromosome. But no, men will continue to exist for a long time to come. And if the Y chromosome disappears, another gene may take over the role of determining sex in men. This topic is still being studied by scientists from various disciplines, but for now, you can rest easy. After all, if there is one thing that the event and degeneration of the Y chromosome can teach us, it is how fragile genetics can be. Small actions, even something we consider insignificant, can lead to drastic and sometimes catastrophic consequences. Humans are known for their tendency to do things just because they seem feasible at the moment. Do you know what else we are very good at? Eliminating enemies and rivals. We mean we are now the only homo species of the many that once existed. Neanderthals, who may have been quite capable in their own right, even stronger, disappeared. The same goes for Homo floriensensis and Denisovans. We reach the top precisely because we are so good at this. Eliminating competition is encoded in our DNA. We are so good at it that we couldn't stop and turned against our own species, as evidenced by this chilling event thousands of years ago, as well as countless other moments throughout our history. Miraculously, we managed to recover from this critical moment. In fact, humanity has experienced many critical moments since then like the one in 536, when the sun disappeared for more than a year, a period that is recognized as the most terrible year in human history. You can learn more about this event and how we recovered from it in the video on the left.